The purpose of this video in the How To GAN series is to provide a basic understanding of why gallium nitride is such a great semiconductor material and how its capabilities are enabling power conversion designers to reduce power losses, reduce system size, improve efficiency, and ultimately reduce system costs. First, let's look at what would make an ideal power switch. These are the key requests from engineers in power conversion. Low conduction losses, which require devices to have a very low on resistance. Faster devices have less switching losses when used in hard switching applications like buck converters. Smaller means less space on a PC board. Board space is very expensive real estate. And of course, everyone wants lower cost. In order to understand why GAN makes a superior transistor, the basic properties of the GAN crystal must be examined and compared to silicon and silicon carbide. These are the basic properties of silicon. The band gap is the amount of energy it takes to pull an electron away from the silicon atom in the crystal. The higher this energy, the higher the temperature at which the device can operate before the semiconductor properties degrade. It also indicates how much electric field can be tolerated by the crystal before it will break down and allow electrons to flow in a largely uncontrolled way. The band gap for silicon carbide and GAN are approximately 3 volts versus silicon at about 1.1 volts and are therefore labeled wide band gap materials. This means that the bonds in the crystal are three times stronger. This is why there's a higher breakdown field for wide band gap materials. For a given voltage applied, the critical electric field at breakdown determines how close the terminals of your device can be brought together before they arc. As shown, the electric field at breakdown of both GAN and silicon carbide are 10 times higher than silicon. This means devices can be 10 times smaller for the same breakdown voltage. This smaller distance between the terminals also means the electrons do not have to travel as far to get from the source to the drain. Additionally, 10 times as many electrons can be packed between the terminals. Together, these three factors mean that silicon carbide or GAN can theoretically be a thousand times smaller than a silicon device for the same resistance and breakdown voltage. The mobility determines how sticky the crystal is to electrons. The higher the value, the more easily the electrons can move without much resistance. The mobility of GAN is higher than that of both silicon and silicon carbide. This mobility, in combination with all the other elements in this chart, is why GAN is theoretically the best material for a power transistor. GAN produces devices with superior on resistance, breakdown voltage, and smaller size compared to silicon. This graph plots the theoretical best performance for a device in silicon, silicon carbide, and gallium nitride by showing the breakdown voltage of a device against the on resistance of a device with a one millimeter square active area. Both silicon carbide and GAN have a theoretical ability more than 1,000 times better than silicon. GAN is even better than silicon carbide because of its higher mobility of electrons. Actual semiconductors are not always ideal structures and therefore achieving a theoretical limit is always a challenge. In the case of silicon MOSFETs, it took 30 years to achieve their theoretical limit. GAN is naturally piezoelectric in nature. This means that when the crystal is strained, it will produce a small voltage. If a very thin layer of aluminum gallium nitride is added to the surface of GAN, a lot of strain over very small distance can be created. This creates an electric field that attracts electrons to the surface, creating a two-dimensional electron gas, or 2-deg. The 2-deg is highly conductive, in part due to the confinement of electrons to a very small region at the interface. 
When voltage is applied, this conductive 2-deg can be used to conduct large amounts of current. This is the basic structure of a high electron mobility transistor or HEMPT. The basic depletion mode GAN transistor structure is shown here. The red area is the strain inducing aluminum gallium nitride layer. As with any power field effect transistor or FET, there are gate, source, and drain electrodes. The source and drain electrodes pierce the top ALGAN layer to form an ohmic contact with the underlying 2-deg. This creates a short circuit between the source and the drain unless the 2-deg pool of electrons is depleted and the semi-insulating GAN crystal can block the flow of current. In order to deplete the 2-deg, a gate electrode is placed on top of the GAN structure. When a negative voltage uh, relative to both drain and source electrode is applied to the gate, the electrons in the 2-deg are depleted out of the device. This type of transistor is called a depletion mode or D mode. In power conversion applications, depletion mode devices are inconvenient because they require a negative voltage on the gate to turn the device off. If a negative voltage is not first applied, the device acts like a short circuit. Fission power conversion has developed a proprietary process for making a gate electrode that pulls away the electrons with zero volts on the gate. A positive voltage pulls electrons to the surface and completes the circuit. We call these enhancement mode devices EGAN FETs. An added convenience of this development is that enhancement mode GAN transistors can also conduct in the reverse direction. When current is forced into the source of an off device, such as in the case of a synchronous rectifier during its dead time, a voltage drop is created from source to drain. When the drain voltage becomes lower than the gate voltage by at least the threshold voltage, as in the th figure on the right, the 2-deg is again restored under the gate electrode and current can flow from source to drain. This acts just like a body diode in a silicon MOSFET, but with one important difference. Because the enhancement mode HEMPT has no minority carrier conduction, when the voltage is removed from the gate, the device turns off instantly. A silicon MOSFET will have stored charge that needs to be swept out, something that can take several nanoseconds. In an E-mode GAN transistor, the stored charge is removed instantaneously. No minority carriers, no reverse recovery. This characteristic is quite useful in certain power conversion circuits. One of the interesting properties of GAN is that it can be grown as a thin layer on top of silicon. By doing this, the cost of the device is greatly lowered because silicon is inexpensive and silicon wafer fabs are able to produce these GAN transistors without any capital investment. This is an actual cross-section of an EGAN FET from EPC. The tiny gates, drain, and source electrodes highlighted in yellow can barely be seen. There are three metal layers stacked on top of each other to conduct the current to the surface connections with very low resistance. EPC manufactures this device in a standard silicon foundry alongside CMOS wafers. And this allows manufacturing to increase quickly and at low costs. To see more detail about how GAN transistors are built, see the video titled, How a GAN Transistor is Built as part of this How-To GAN series. Owing to the higher critical electric field in GAN, GAN on silicon devices can have a lateral conduction path while maintaining very small size compared with silicon-based MOSFETs. It's therefore straightforward to monolithically integrate multiple GAN on silicon power transistors along with silicon level components. 
An example of such single chip integration, including multiple power devices and signal level devices on the same chip, is shown here. This ability to integrate multiple functions monolithically makes it possible to produce a complete power conversion system on a single GAN on silicon chip while significantly lowering the cost and increasing the efficiency of power conversion. Most power conversion applications have at their core a half bridge in some form. This half bridge requires drivers and level shifting functions to drive and synchronize the high side transistor with the low side. Shown here is the block diagram showing the chip scale integrated circuit that implements all of these functions. Once the building block of a half bridge with drivers and level shift has been developed, the door is open for producing a wide variety of integrated circuit variants, such as full bridge converters and three phase power stages. In addition, it's straightforward to add functions and features such as analog and digital interfaces and controls. Here's the actual chip that has all these functions integrated together monolithically. In this video, a new platform for making switching power transistors using gallium nitride grown on top of a silicon substrate was introduced. Enhancement mode transistors have in-circuit characteristics very similar to power MOSFETs, but with a lower on resistance, improved switching speed, and at a smaller size than their silicon predecessors. These new capabilities, married with a step forward in chip scale high density packaging, enable power conversion designers to reduce power losses, reduce system size, improve efficiency, and reduce cost. For more detailed information about material characteristics of GAN transistors, please see the third edition textbook, GAN Transistors for Efficient Power Conversion, or view more videos in the How to GAN series. And for more information on eGAN FETs and IC products and evaluation kits, go to the epc-co.com website.